What is up guys, it's Cal, and in this video I'm going to show you how to get every single Nighthold achievement. So, let's just get started. Here we are at Scorperon, and this achievement is Cage Rematch. So you see this uh, center ring here? No one can leave that ring during the entire fight. So at the start of the fight, you want everyone to start pretty much on that ring. And then you want to burn Scorperon's face off. Now the biggest thing to look out for is Shockwave, because as Scorpion loses health, he'll shoot out these shards, and right before Shockwave happens, you actually want to do it like at least 6-7 seconds just to be safe before Shockwave happens. Get behind one of those uh, little uh, shell pieces on the ground, so Shockwave won't hit you because Shockwave will knock you back against the wall. And that means you automatically fail the achievement if anyone in your rig group does that. So hide behind the shell pieces when Shockwave goes off, don't get hit by it, kill Scorpion, and you'll get Cage Rematch. Now this next achievement for Chronomatic Anomaly is Grand Opening, and it is possible to do on Normal, but it's actually easier on Heroic. They did nerf it at some point, and a lot of guides do say that you can only do it on Heroic, but after the nerfs, it is possible to do on Normal difficulty, even though my group ended up doing it on Heroic. And that's because the achievement revolves around the mechanic Time Bomb. Now what the achievement is, is you have to activate 8 of the spotlights around the Nightwell, and then defeat Chronomatic Anomaly. Now if you do this on heroic mode, you're I'm pretty sure going to get 3 time bombs no matter what each time he does his time bomb mechanic. But if you do this on normal, it seems like he does 1 time bomb per full group. So if you have at least 15 people, you will get 3 time bombs, but if you have 13, then like you will get 2 no matter what, but you have a 60% chance of getting a third one, so it is still possible, but uh, more difficult. Now what you do with these time bombs? These spotlights that are around the Nightwell Circle, whenever you get a time bomb, you have to go stand on those. And people have to stand on them individually, and once the time bomb goes off, you'll see a slight shimmering visual that shows that the spotlight is lit up, and you need 8 of them to light up. So don't kill Chronomatic Anomaly until at least 8 of them are lit up, and then you can kill them for the grand opening achievement. Now this next achievement is with Trilliax and it's called Gluten Free. Now you might already have this one, so you might want to go ahead and check, because it is one that a lot of people get unintentionally. Now throughout the fight, there will be various cakes that spawn, and for this achievement, your group cannot eat more than 20 of them. So it's essentially just kill Trilliax and don't eat any of the cake slices. You can eat a couple of them if you want to avoid the sweepers that maneuver around the room to get them, but just make sure your group does not eat more than 20, kill Trilliax, and you get the achievement. Now let's talk about Spellblade Allurial, and the achievement is a change in scenery. So what you have to do is you have to take her to three different places in Nighthold, and then kill her in each of those places. So with that being said, you have to do this on three separate visits. That does not mean you have to do it on three separate weeks. You could actually have someone in your group save the lockout before Spellblade by logging out on that tomb before you kill Spellblade, and then each time you kill her, that person will be in the group, they're the group leader, they enter first, so then it just keeps doing their lockout. And you do that three times. Now the three places are Astromancer's Rise, the Shaldorai Terrace, and the Shattered Walkway. So first off, Astromancer's Rise. This is the building to the left where if you go up the stairs you'll be at Star Augur and going forward brings you to Botanist. You obviously want to make sure you clear out all the mobs in this building before you bring her here, and you do have to immediately bring her here by the way. She has to reach this destination within 120 seconds of entering combat, which for this one in Shaldorai Terrace isn't much of a problem. Uh, the Shattered Walkway is a bit further of a run, but it really shouldn't take you two minutes to bring her there. Anyways, make sure you kill her in this area, redo the lockout, and then you want to bring her to the Shaldorai Terrace, which is the garden beside botanist. So you want to clear out a good bit of that garden beforehand, and even though when you're on the bridge it does register you in the Shaldorai Terrace, there have been a lot of people that says that it glitches if you kill her on the bridge, so make sure you bring her into the garden past the bridge. And then finally the Shattered Walkway, which is Croesus's platform. You don't have to kill Croesus before you do this, just make sure you don't pull him. And you will bring her to that bottom platform, just right in front of Croesus. So you essentially want everyone in your raid group besides a tank and a healer to stand at the bottom platform, have a tank and a healer go pull her, and then just run her all the way down to where the rest of the group is, and then kill her for the change in scenery achievement. Now let's talk about the Croesus achievement, which is Burning Bridges. Now first off, I want to say that this achievement is a lot easier the more people you have. I did do it with 12 people, uh, but it does make it a bit harder. And for this achievement, you have to defeat Croesus after quenching 15 burning embers on normal difficulty or higher. Now what that means is throughout the fight he casts Burning Pitch, and you'll see these green fissures on the ground which spawn burning embers. If you have a low amount of people in the raid, like I do, you don't want to soak 
any of those burning embers, unless they're at the very, very back of the platform. And what quenching them exactly means is that he's going to cast slam three times. On the third slam, the portions of the bridge will break the front portion first. And once that front portion breaks, all burning embers that were on the front portion will fall into the water and they will be quenched. And you have to do that with 15 burning embers. Now, if you have a low amount like myself, you really can't soak any of the burning ember piles, which does make this a very healing intensive achievement. Now, if you do have a lot of people, then you'll have to use your own judgment to it, use your own discretion, but you can probably soak some of the ones a little more uh, forward than the back. Just make sure that you have 15 of the burning embers, fall into the water, wait until the last bridge section if you have to, but make sure he doesn't slam the last bridge section three times, of course, or else it's a wipe automatically. Oh, and obviously don't kill any of the burning embers. There will be a lot in melee range, do not AoE them, don't use any AoE for this achievement. And then you kill Krosis once you've quenched 15 of them, and then you get the achievement. Next up is the Star Augur achievement called Elementary. And for this achievement, you have to defeat a well-traveled nether elemental on normal difficulty or higher. Now, if you come to this location, beside Star Augur's building, you'll see a nether elemental. Make sure you clear all the adds beside it. There are two uh, mages that are kind of holding them in place. Make sure to kill them. And then the nether elemental will be there, free. So for this achievement, you want everyone besides a tank and maybe a healer to be in Star Augur's room, have a tank and a healer, grab the nether elemental, and then bring them up to Star Augur's platform and then engage in the Star Augur fight. So you want one of the tanks to tank the nether elemental to the edge of the platform and then the other tank to tank Star Augur. You can three tank this one if you really have to. Through each of Star Augur's phases, the nether elemental is actually going to become stronger and have more health, but his health increases percent wise. So once you transition into the ice phase, he becomes an adventurous nether elemental. And you want the tank and maybe one DPS to just damage him down a bit. Obviously do not kill him until the last phase because when I said his health increases percent wise i mean like when he becomes an adventurous nether elemental he will have more max health but his health stays at let's say like 50 percent going into that phase his health will still stay at 50 percent and then once you go into the last phase he becomes a well-traveled nether elemental and at this point you want everyone in your raid to kill him once he's dead kill star auger and you'll get the elementary achievement Next up is High Botanist with the Fruit of All Evil achievement. So for this achievement, you want to start out by clearing out a lot of the space around High Botanist. You want to clear out a lot of the garden. And around the garden, you'll see these little fruits that you can interact with. Before you start the encounter, you want everyone to interact with the strange fruits that they find on the ground. This will give you an Arcane Exposure debuff. Now this will do three different things to you. You can get stunned, you can get knocked back, and then probably the most important one to look out for is hallucinations will spawn. Now how the hallucinations work is that someone else's will spawn that only you can see. So essentially you'll see a hallucination spawn that only you can see but it will attack someone else and it will do a lot of damage. It also only has 1 HP. So make sure you kill all hallucinations you see so they don't kill other people. Because if anyone dies in this encounter, you have to restart. If anyone dies, you won't get the achievement. So make sure everyone gets the Arcane Exposure buff, defeat High Botanist without anyone dying, and you'll get your Fruit of All Evil achievement. Next up, we got Tachondrius with the Not For You achievement. Now this is the only achievement in here that's actually personal, so other people can screw it up, but you can still get it. Also, this is another one that a lot of people just get unintentionally, so you might want to go ahead and check if you already have this one. And this has to do with the mechanic Echoes of the Void. Now during the encounter, he'll cast Echoes of the Void and four spikes will spawn around the room. To not take damage from the Echoes of the Void, you want to stand behind the spikes and that's how you get the achievement is you personally cannot get hit by the Echoes of the Void. So as soon as you see him casting that, find the spike pillar near you, get behind it, uh, but you wanna make sure not everyone gets behind the same pillar because these pillars do have a health pool. So if everyone stacks behind the same pillar, the Echoes of the Void will just hit that pillar and it will get destroyed. Now in normal, I've rarely seen a pillar get destroyed, but it is possible if everyone gets behind the same pillar. And then you just gotta make sure you defeat Tachondrius without getting hit at all by Echoes of the Void and you'll get your Not For You achievement. Next up we have Elisan with the infinitesimal achievement. Now this achievement reads that you have to get betrayed by and then defeat an infinite whelpling during the Grand Magistrix Elisan encounter. And then you have to defeat her. Now what this means exactly is you need at least one person in your raid group to have the infinite whelpling which can be found outside caverns of time or even inside around the portals. So throughout the encounter she will spawn a blue elemental and then a pink elemental. The blue elemental doesn't move 
but the pink one does. So bring the pink one near the blue one. You want your raid to kill the blue elemental, which will spawn a big blue bubble. And then you want your tank to drag the pink elemental near the blue bubble and then kill the pink elemental. So the pink bubble that the pink one leaves kind of creates a Venn diagram with the blue bubble. And then the person in your raid group designated to have the infinite whelpling needs to summon it and then stand in between the pink and the blue bubble where they overlap. And then the infinite whelpling will turn into an infinite drakeling. You want your entire raid to kill that and then you just defeat Elisande. And that is the infinitesimal achievement. Now finally, we've got Gul'dan with the I've Got My Eyes On You achievement. And for this, you have to defeat 16 Eyes of Gul'dan within 3 seconds. So this is a very healing intensive achievement. For 15 people, we did have 4 healers, so keep that in mind. So what you really want to do is don't DPS Gul'dan so that none of his abilities become empowered. Towards the beginning of that phase, he'll spawn 3 Eyes of Gul'dan, which you want to designate 1 or 2 people to damage them a bit. Definitely do not kill them though, because once they duplicate, those duplicated Eyes will have the same health as the Eyes that they duplicated from. And you need to kill 16 Eyes within 3 seconds this way. So with that being said, you want 3 Eyes to duplicate into 6, and then 6 eyes will duplicate into 12, and then after the third duplication is when you want to kill all of the eyes very quickly, all the AoE, heroism, just burn all the eyes down super quickly. Now if you are tracking this achievement, it will begin to show up red, but then once all 16 eyes die within 3 seconds, it will glow white, and then after that, you want to kill Gul'dan. And that is how you get the I've got my eyes on you achievement. So, that is it. That is how you get all of the achievements in Nighthold, which are also all part of the Glory of the Legion Raider achievement, which awards you the Grove Defiler. You need to do both Emerald Nightmare and Nighthold achievements, but I hope this video was helpful at all to you guys. If it was, you can leave a like on it, you can sub to the channel for more videos like this, and I'll see you guys in the next video.